Good morning. It's uh, Sunday the 23rd of March and uh, we're gathering together for worship, for Christian worship. We can't obviously gather together in one place at the moment. We're in the middle of the coronavirus. Uh, but there's a question for us. Uh, how do we gather when we can't gather <laughs> as a church? And uh, we, we need to believe at this time that um, we are who we always have been, which is we are the church. God lives in us. He lives in his people. And wherever we are, we are the church. And so today is a really good opportunity to do that. I'm speaking today to Elm Park Baptist Church. It's great uh, to see you. But wherever you are, if you're not part of that church or part of another church or not part of any church, that's fine. We're just worshipping together today and we're gathering together. We've just got a few messages to encourage us and to support us. Uh, one of the things I want to encourage you to do wherever you are is to be the church, to be where God has placed you, to love the people that are around you, to love each other and also to reach out. It's not a time for us to batten down the hatches and uh, just look after ourselves. It's a time for us to reach out look out for the lonely, look out for those that are isolated. How can you reach out? How can you give them a call? How can you make sure everybody's got what they need? How can we connect with people? There's so many incredible opportunities for us to do that. So may God bless us to bless other people. Can I encourage you? Uh, we're gonna gather together in worship. So you might wanna pause this video, get together with your family, and we can worship together, we can just have these few moments. We've been thinking as a church about the fact that Paul says in one of his letters that we are the body of Christ and each one of us is a part of it. So, but we're all interconnected. And so we're gonna say some words together. And uh, these words are very simple words. Yet we are one in Christ. Yet we are one in Christ. Let's say that together yet we are one in Christ. We are many, God's great diversity, yet we are one in Christ. Different faces, different races, yet we are one in Christ. Butchers, bakers, website makers, bankers, tailors, teachers, sailors, yet we are one in Christ. Fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers, single, married, broken, carried, yet we are one in Christ. The happy, the clappy, the barely out of nappies, the ancient, the modern, the famous, the forgotten, yet we are one in Christ. Some hopeful, some hopeless, some cope well, some cope less, some sure and some doubt, some whisper, some shout, yet we are one in Christ. Those with abundance, those with need, those who are generous or wrestle with greed, yet we are one in Christ. Elbows, tummies, knees and noses, kidneys, femurs, teeth and toeses. Some are mentionable, some protected, some accepted, some rejected, yet we are one in Christ. A broken body, torn apart, mars God's image, breaks God's heart, and yet our Father knows how the end will be, when all his kids will sing in harmony. The bride will dazzle, her branches bloom, so add your voice to him the tune, that we are one in Christ. So we recognise that wherever we are, we are one in Christ and we are part of the body. Let's pray together. Father God, help us to recognise today that we are with you and that we are with each other. Wherever we are gathered over the internet, that we are together and we are worshipping you together. Help us in these few moments to receive hope, to receive your blessing, to receive encouragement and to receive your word. And equip us, Lord, to be the body of Christ wherever we are. In Jesus' name.
Amen. One of the things I want to share with us this morning is the fact that we have everything we need in Jesus. Jesus is everything we need. Right back at the very beginning of the Bible, Adam and Eve were in the garden and God gave them everything that they need. They could live in loving union with him. He provided everything for them, the fruits, the vegetable, the land, everything. And yet they chose to believe a lie. They chose to believe that God was not looking after them that God was withholding something, that God wanted to spoil uh, their fun. And so they they lied, they deceived, they rebelled against God. They, they did what God told them not to do. And that's where the fall came in. And ever since then, we've had this separation from God and the separation from each other. And we've been trying to come back to that God and we've been trying to come back to the way where we're supposed to live in loving union with God. But we, we don't trust God. We don't feel that we have enough, that he's a, he's a generous God. And he, he gives us everything we need, not just for ourselves, but so that we can bless others. You know, God said to Abraham, I will bless you and you will be a blessing. And God wants us to be fruitful and to multiply. Back in Exodus chapter 16, they were, God was leading the people through the desert in the wilderness and even though they were in disobedience, even though they weren't doing what God had told them to do, he did provide for them. He did give them what they need. He gave them meat. Quail came in. He gave them water when they were, when they were in a desert. And he gave them daily bread. And that bread was called manna. Where did it come from? They don't know. They, they said, what is it? And the word, what is it, is manna. Uh, but it also tells us that this, that God, their clothes didn't wear out during that time. Their feet, their shoes, their sandals didn't wear out. Their feet didn't swell up. God protected them when they had illnesses and sickness and he provided a way that they could be healed. And so God was providing for them. God was looking after them. And so I want to say to you, whatever your situation is, whatever your family needs are, that God is looking after you, that God is with you, that God will help you. And everything you need is in a relationship with Jesus. It says this in Exodus 16, the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. So God is saying every day I'm going to give you what you need. It's going to be manna. It's going to be, we don't know where it comes from, but it comes from heaven and God provides us. And every day we go out and we get what we need for that day. For that day, Jesus said, give us today our daily bread. Today. But we can't get any for tomorrow. Because he says to them, that they are to gather what they need for that day. Um, so it says, Moses, it says later in this passage, Moses said to them, it is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. The Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they gathered it by the omer, the one who gathered much did not have too much. And the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. And then Moses said to them, no one is to keep any of it until morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots. And began to smell. It's interesting isn't it that God wants to provide what we need for each day but we don't have what we need for tomorrow yet. We're going to get that tomorrow so tomorrow we're going to pray the same prayer give us today our daily bread and the day after we're going to pray the same prayer give us today our daily bread but we can't hoard. They were fearful that they were in lack 
that they weren't going to get what they need. And so they wanted to hoard it, hoard it and keep it to themselves. And we're seeing that the fear is rampant within our society that somehow, uh, I, I, I want to be honest with you, sometimes when I see the shelves are empty in the shops and I think to myself, are we going to have what we need? Do we need to go and get some food? Do we need to go and pile it all up? Do we need to fill the cupboards? And there's that fear that rises within me to think we've got to get it. We've got to hoard it. We've got to get what we need. But then I come back to a place of saying, no, I can trust in God. I can trust in God. Every day he will give us what we need, but more than what we need, he'll give us enough to bless others, to be generous, to share with others. And so I want to encourage you with these words today that God has given you everything that you need in Jesus. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. I am what you need and I, I, I'm what you need every day. I will provide for you. I will bless you. Uh, you don't need to worry. You don't need to fear. You don't need to be afraid. God is looking after us. God is taking us through this season. In, in Matthew 6, Jesus says, Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labour or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Can you receive those words of Jesus into your life right now to say to you, do not worry. Do not stress. You have everything that you need in Jesus. You can trust in him. He gives you that. He gives you what you need. When Jesus broke bread, he, he gave thanks and he raised it up and he said, thank you, Heavenly Father, for the bread that you've given and he took five loaves and two fish and he multiplied it to feed 5,000 people, plus men and women. That's about 25,000 people from bread. What did he do? He gave thanks. He gave thanks. So I want to encourage you, give thanks for what you have. Break the bread, the daily bread, and God will bless you and God will give you what you need. Amen. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is thy health and salvation.
to the 